What is your view on uh, NGOs and these grassroots organisations which are put in other countries to solve the, the poverty problem? Have you got a view on them? Yeah, I, I used to work for them and so I, I'm empathetic to what they're trying to do. I think most of them are, they have their hearts in the right place. And in some cases, look, let's be honest, they're doing, they're doing good on the ground. They're improving people's lives in sort of a, in a, a, in a, a micro sense at least. But the problem here is that they participate in this discourse that, um, that the problem is not structural. The problem can be addressed with a bit of aid, a bit of advice, et cetera. Um, and so in that sense, I think they really miss the point about what's causing poverty in the first place. But the problem is, this is the problem that I discovered working for these organizations, is that when you start to push uh, them in this direction, then a lot of people in those organizations actually want to take those steps. But the problem is that their, their, their donors stand to lose quite a lot if, uh, if NGOs start uh, trying to transform, uh, start trying to lobby to transform the global economy to make it fairer because um, their donors benefit from the status quo effectively. So there really is kind of a disincentive for them to, to make real change. And that I think is a, is a problem we have to confront. Awkward conversations with donors. Absolutely. <laughs> Maybe donors need awkward conversations. I would say they do. Because, because they, 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 they don't, they understand, the donors understand. I suppose um, in some cases probably they do. Look, let's look at Bill Gates, for example. Let's look at Bill Gates. Let's look at Bill Gates. Yes. Look, in many ways, um, he's done a lot of good. He gives a lot of money to, um, uh, to charity around the world, uh, focused on trying to improve the plight of the poorest in the world, right? right. Um, uh, and specifically in public health. But at the same time, where does, where does his wealth come from? It, co it comes from patents that he holds um, on, on technology he's, he's designed with Microsoft. And, uh, and the reason he's able to accumulate so much is because the patent laws um, are, are super strict uh, and allow him to siphon immense amounts of, re of rents from these patent laws, right? These patent laws are enshrined in the trade-related aspects of international property, uh, intellectual property rights agreement in the WTO. And Microsoft, uh, lobbied very hard for those uh, patent laws to be strengthened and increased, right? Those are the exact same patent laws that prevent uh, millions of people in the global south from accessing um, basic generic medications um, and other basic uh, development technologies that they need. Um, Why? Uh, well, because they have to pay such enormous licensing fees to the companies that own those patents. Who owns the patents? In the case of medicines, it's pharmaceutical companies, mostly in the U.S., for example. So, for example, the AIDS crisis is a great example here. You could have basically prevented much of the AIDS crisis from happening if, uh, if people in countries like Swaziland, where I'm from, um, had access to generic drugs that would be used to treat HIV uh, and prevent it. Uh, but those drugs were not allowed to be imported into Swaziland because of rules brought in under the TRIPS agreements under the WTO that were lobbied for by Gates. So Gates is aware that the way that the trade system is designed when it comes to patent laws uh, serves his interests and also um, hurts the interests of millions of poor people around, around the world. Uh, and yet that never comes into his discourse about, about the causes of poverty. He, he removes that from the scene. He, he offers an apolitical solution um, and chooses to focus on, on charity instead.